February 1st, 2003. Space Shuttle Columbia disintegrated on reentry. Just a few days earlier, a piece of foam was dislodged at launch and struck the leading edge of the left wing. Damage which ultimately resulted in catastrophe. It was a sad day, a very sad, tragic loss of human life, made only more upsetting by what happened behind the scenes. You see, engineers knew beforehand that there were issues with dislodging pieces of foam. And these engineers knew that while the Space Shuttle Columbia was in orbit, that there could have been very serious damage. But those thoughts, those ideas were stifled. You see, as amazing as technology is, and we've seen some incredible stuff here today, we must remember that at the end of the day, there's still always reliance on people. That no matter how much cool things we come up with, and as we've learned, that the future of aerospace is private companies, is startups, is you, people like you and me who are working in labs, coming with ideas, doing research. We've some, seen some crazy stuff from students. It's these organizations, these groups, and these startups that are going to make the future of aerospace. But it's not companies themselves. Because people see companies, and they see them as these sort of machines that put out stuff. They see uh, organizations like uh, TED, and they just see the result. But the crucial factor is what happens behind the scenes, is the people. And what describes everything that goes into these people working together? What is the way that how these people talk to each other? What they say, what they don't say? What are the common beliefs that unite them together? What are the values that they share? What is driving them all forward in the same direction? In a word, it's culture. You see, the culture of an organization is very, very powerful. Not just in for the potential loss and potential catastrophe that can happen if your culture doesn't function properly, but it can also drive you to great successes. I learned this the hard way, in, uh, thankfully in a situation with much lower stakes. See, I've always wanted to start a business. So coming into Embry-Riddle as a freshman, I did just that with a good friend of mine. We went around looking for a problem to solve, and what we ultimately landed on was taking the bulletin boards around campus and putting them online. Not a bad idea. And actually did pretty well. We got a lot of hype, over, reached over 1,000 students. But there's a problem. You see, quite frankly, my passion is not for college students. It's not for communication on college campuses. My passion is for airlines. So what was I doing in this business where I was providing a communication method for college students? And to compound on that, people we brought on the team didn't have that same passion either. They were very passionate, very intelligent, and very good at what they did, but they weren't excited about what we were doing. They thought it was a good idea and it was useful and all that, but they just didn't have that burning passion inside of them. And so when we reached the downfall, when we reached the trough, the bottom, that you're always going to reach, no matter what you do. You're going to have times when you're going to want to give up in any project, in any company, in any startup. And what will drive you through that trough is something burning deep inside of you, saying, I want to get to that other side. I want to see a day where we have flying cars. I want to see a day where we're living in space. I want to see a day where we can scan something here and see it printed out over there. It's that that will drive you through. And it is that that I learned the hard way. So a couple months, actually just a month ago, I made one of the most difficult decisions in my life. 
the decision to stop working on my baby. I spent three years of my life, untold hours, working. Sweat, even a little bit of blood, even a tear or two. And so much frustration, so much excitement and jubilation, so much stress. Almost my entire college career was put in this, and I had to decide to stop working on it. It was very painful, made only more painful by the fact that not everyone on the team was on board. But you know what? I think it was the right decision. Because it freed me up to do things like help out with TEDx and Riddle, to work on starting an airline, to do other things that I'm deeply passionate about and that I want to do. Do things that I'll be able to get through those doubts because of that passion. So what I want you to remember today is that as you go forward, and as you have these amazing ideas, and you start to put them into action, and you work for companies that are doing amazing things that you're really excited about, to remember that. Remember the human element. Remember that it's not just the technology, it's not just the ideas, but it's the people behind those companies, the people behind those projects that make them reality. And it's those people's passion that are what ultimately will drive us all into the future of aerospace. Thank you.